So I'm here today doing uh, new consultations. Uh, this young man, Joseph, uh, shows up. How are you going? Good? Good. All right. Joseph is seven, right? Yep. And uh, the history is Joseph's already had his tonsils and adenoids out. What age, Mum? At four. At four? Yeah. Uh, and that was because he had a sleep study to show he had sleep apnea, right? Yeah. Uh, so the innocent throat doctor is a very good innocent throat doctor, has done the tonsils and adenoids. Um, and um, no sleep study was done as a follow up, you know, because we're talking about uh, the residual um, AHI, uh, which is to determine if there's still any residual apnea after doing intervention A or B, right? Now, lucky the dentist, Joseph's dentist, has picked up that he's got a class two jaw, a narrow palate, um, and a tongue tie. And uh, she's referred into my practice, and um, I'll be happy to show you the articles. I sent you the article on, mm -hmm. on the tongue tie and its implication to sleep apnea, and also the article on um, cracking the jaw and mm -hmm. sleep apnea, right? Um, because I want more parents to be aware that dental implications of sleep apnea are as important as enos and throat, right? Now, can, can you, well, if you, if you look at Joseph, you can see under his eyes, he has the venous pooling. Now, venous pooling is classic uh, of poor oxygen saturation at night. Does, you, you say he still s snores a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. So, snoring, of course, in a child is another indication. But have a look at Joseph's bite. Can I, can I show them your bite? Is that okay? Yeah. Good man. Okay. Do you remember how many millimetres? I measured it before, huh? Yeah. How many? Ten. Ten, exactly. So if you look at this young man's overbite, close together, think, close on your back teeth, thank you. There's one of the problems, a retronatic mandible. The other problem is the palate. Can you put your chin up in the air for me and just go, ah, big, big ah, open ah. Up. Thank you. Uh, look how narrow the palate is. There's no way eye teeth are going to have room to fit in there. Um, and the last thing is, is, is the tongue tie. Can I get you to lift your tongue up? Good man. Look, look how tongue tied he is. You've got the classical diastema here. You've got the, um, uh, this opened really wide for me, thank you. Um, you've got like the Eiffel Tower insertion. You've got Kotlow's measurement open again for me. And in Audrey Yoon's classification, the tip of the tongue can't go up there. So one of the big factors here is going to be um, early release of the lingual frenum if there is implication to that. And um, if we look behind the lingual frenum, you see also a posterior uh, band of attachment. So the tongue is effectively on the back of the airway with the class 2 jaw, that's contributing to the apnea. And the sad thing is, you know, you've had inos and throat opinion, you've had sleep uh, uh, respiratory physician opinion, but it took a dentist to figure out really what the main problem here is, which is the tongue tie in the jaw position. So luckily, uh, Joseph's at a good age, and it's, it's, it's very easy to widen his jaw, bring it forward. Otherwise, when I went to orthodontic school, a child like this, you'd wait until they were 13, 14, and with a big overbite, you'd take out teeth and retract the upper teeth. Uh, and that would worsen the apnea, and worsen the profile, etc. So I think it's important for general dentists to work with respiratory physicians, work with enos and throat doctors to understand the importance of that. And we're hoping after we fix his jaw, and his tongue tie, maybe we'll do a final sleep study and check that he has no sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Okay, awesome. good. All good? Yeah. Thank you very much for the video. Great.